Hi, welcome back. Continuing with a bit of support for dissertation students who, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, just can't get the supervisions, I thought I'd put together a video for you today on how to proofread and kind of format your dissertation. So the first thing that you should think about when you're bringing your dissertation together is your bibliography. Sounds counterintuitive, you might want to go in with your cover page, um, but you need to ensure that everything that you have referenced in the body of your work is in the bibliography. If this is something that you've been letting slide so far, then you need to copy and paste all of your footnotes down, put them in red, and be sure to reference everything with the referencing guidelines open. In classics, it's often the case that you're going to want to reference all of your primary sources first, so anything from the ancient world, um, and I'll show you on the screen, you can see at my institution, we reference by the name of the ancient author, the date, the title, and then we have the translator come afterwards. But this is something I would hope that you've been keeping on top of, that your supervisors have encouraged you to keep on top of as you go. If you handed it, if you hand in a dissertation with a substandard bibliography, it's going to hurt you more perhaps than, well, more for sure than it would with other essays because it's really an opportunity for you to show the breadth of your research. Um, it's something that shows how widely you've read and looked into the topic. Um, and given that for your dissertation, part of the assessment is research, it is actually more important than ever. Okay. So when you're putting together your bibliography, if you feel like you've fallen down on that so far, copy and paste all your in-text references down. Um, be sure that everything in there is logged. If you feel that you've read material that you've not had the opportunity to include, um, perhaps look over your highlights in that work again, if you've annotated it, or look over your notes on that work and see if you could footnote it in the body of the text and then pop it in the bibliography. In my school, uh, we were always encouraged to only put things in the bibliography that were noted somewhere in the text in a, a footnote citation. So if you slam lots of stuff in the bibliography and it's not clear that you've made good use of it in the dissertation, it's only really doing lip service to the research component of your work. So you can go back in, add some citations in if you feel, feel like they're thin on the ground. Um, there isn't a magic number. I would aim for coverage rather than um, sheer amount so make sure that every chapter in your dissertation um, pays attention to scholarship if you have one section of your dissertation that really just totally ignores secondary material that's going to become really obvious to the marker so coverage is perhaps more important than just sheer amount and aim to use your footnotes to help you with your bibliography okay i'm not going to be more specific on formatting because every university every school is different and the referencing guidelines for your institution should be on your online portal if not email your tutor and be sure that you have the right instructions in front of you okay the other thing to think about that you might not have encountered before might not have had to worry about before in dissertations or in um, essays before your dissertation i should say are image references Image references become more important in dissertations because you're allowed to research more widely. Often we only really deal with images if, for example, you have an exam where they are a stimulus source or something like that. Referencing images is something that should be done somewhat separately from the scholarship you're going to be looking at and from the primary literature that you're going to be looking at. So you can see at the beginning of my dissertation, I have a list of the images that um, should be expected. I got a correction on my dissertation that said, just give us an idea of what the content of the images is. So I gave the title of say, early Lucadian bell crater, and it should just say, you know, Medea flying away from her children, you know, just a summary of what's actually happening in the image so that the marker knows how illustrative it's gonna be. Um, and list them as figures. Now, from a formatting point of view, I took the decision to put all of my images at the back of my dissertation because formatting in-text images is really difficult and fiddly. If you have done a dissertation that is really, really focused on artwork, if you've done a dissertation in classics that's on sculpture or architecture or coinage, um, even if you actually just include a lot of maps in your dissertation, it might be a kindness to the marker, if possible, to put them in the body of the text. If you do so, underneath the image in a box, you should have all of the relevant information about it. So, figure and then a figure number for the order that it appears in your work. The source, maybe a cataloging number for the museum. A synopsis that you have written stating what happens in the image 
or if you find this image in another piece of work it's a diagram like for me I have some theatre buildings in there and they're actually diagrams commissioned for a particular piece of scholarship to help illustrate a point and um, I always bracket surname date page the same way I would if I was quoting from that work and um, so that it's really easy for the marker to see where you got that particular version from ditto actually any specific images of vases because they're taken from different angles things look different in different shots and it's just helpful for the marker to know exactly where you got the image from once you've done that you should always reference the image source the book that you took the image from in your bibliography so for me if i have taplin pots and plays taplin's going to go in my bibliography as a reference he's going to go in my um, image caption underneath the image whether that's at the end of the dissertation or in the body of the dissertation in a box and it's going to appear not necessarily the source but the image is going to appear in the list of images at the front so that's something to try and be scrupulous with as you work through your dissertation it's certainly something to double check if like me art isn't perhaps the main focus of your research but it's a sort of auxiliary it's something that you can be a bit lazier with and i admit that i have to be really strict with myself on artwork it's not something i'm very used to okay so once you've done your bibliography once you've done your image references and your list of images you need to make sure that you've formatted a clear contents page. So you can do this manually by looking at the page reference, looking at your subheading, going back in and typing it in. That is one way to do it. The problem with that is that as you start to copy edit, if the page references change, if things move around quite a bit, um, you have to go back in and manually change it all. So we'll share the screen together and I'll show you how to do that. And what this enables you to do is highlight the different subheadings within your piece of work, anchor them as a particular uh, function. So basically, subheading one, chapter one, you label that as chapter one, you highlight it and you format it into the contents page using the software on Word. This means that if your page references change and jump around, you're still gonna be able to leave your contents page alone, let it sort itself out, okay? And that's something that just makes life a lot easier. It's fiddly learning to do it. I'll show you on the screen, but once you've done it, it's sorted and it's just one less thing to worry about. Okay, in the hierarchy of importance, this is probably the last, but it's the thing you probably think about first. And that's your cover page. So it depends on your school. My university wanted a cover page that included a student ID, reference to a dissertation shooter, the date, um, and the school in which you were undertaking the dissertation, along with your title. We were free to include whatever cover images we wanted. I made one up. Um, it is also necessary if you include an image on the front to reference that in your list of illustrations. So even if it's, in my case, decorative and not informative, um, you still need to include that in your list of illustrations. So if you have, say, the Pronomos vase on the front or a reconstruction of the Arapacus on the front, just pop that in your list of images as well. Okay. The next thing to worry about before you think about printing is moving your page references your page numbers and your margins so that when you print it you can have a bound edge now this means that you need to format your margins in a mirrored way so that when you look at them on the screen you get a fat margin on the left you scroll down you get a fat margin on the right because what's eventually going to happen when you um, print your dissertation is you're going to have that ring bound so i'll show you how to do that on the screen together so if you go to layout margins um, you can go down to mirrored click mirrored and this will show you um, how to kind of push the edge out so that you can have a bound edge you also need to format the page numbers in the same way
and there's some fiddling around with the page numbers that I'll show you on the screen to ensure that the main body of your dissertation has um, Arabic numbers, so one, two, three, four, in the characters you're accustomed to, the characters you'd see on a calculator. For us, the bibliography and the appendices and anything before or after the main body of your work has to be with Roman numerals. So I'll show you how to fiddle about on the presets in Word to do that as well. Okay, good luck. If you want any more advice and tips on dissertations, leave me a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe to keep the channel going. All right, thanks.